me now is Michael Hyke, president and CEO of Greater New Orleans, Inc., which focuses on the economic development in southeast Louisiana. It's a system that is supposed to work one way, but it often doesn't. Uh, first of all, why is that? Why does it seem so messy and hard to get the money that you pay into for these disasters when they hit? Yeah, well, Marty, there are, there are a number of reasons for that. The first is that many people assume that flood insurance or that flood is covered in their homeowner's policy, but it's not. You have to have separate flood insurance. And then if you think about who tends to have it, um, <laughs> most people don't. Uh, less than 1% uh, of the homes in North Carolina and the other areas that were hit by Helene have flood insurance. So um, you've got expensive homeowners insurance that doesn't cover flood, and then most people don't have flood insurance. So uh, you have two compounding problems. So what is your advice for folks at the start of this nightmare to try to recoup some of the damages if, for instance, they don't have flood insurance? Are they just left footing the bill completely themselves? Um, no. Um, what you typically see in disasters, and we've seen this, of course, going back to Katrina, is that the federal government will come through. There will eventually be aid that comes from HUD. Uh, there will be uh, loans that will be made available for homeowners to rebuild and then some other private sources. But the, the truth of it is that my advice is that for everybody, if you live near water of any sort, uh, the, the ocean, a river, uh, a lake, you should get flood insurance. Um, it's relatively inexpensive, even though it's getting more expensive, compared to the cost of rebuilding, and you can get $250,000 for your home and $100,000 for content. For folks who don't have that, um, it's a challenge. It's a drain on their savings, and, and tragically, and we saw this in Katrina and other events, uh, some people will just end up losing their homes, and that's that's terrible for everybody. Yeah, no, it, it is awful. And for those, Michael, who do have flood insurance, um, say it is up to $250,000, how easy is that process uh, to recoup that money, and how long does it take? Um, that process tends to be uh, fairly reasonable. Um, in, in past experience, uh, four to six weeks to get those funds. Uh, it depends who the carrier is, um, but that process actually works. So people who do have flood insurance tend to be able to uh, get that money, begin to do repairs on their homes. And the only thing that I would say to folks who are listening to this is if you were flooded, even if it was a small amount of water, start the demo immediately. Because if you don't remediate that water and you get mold, you're gonna end up having far greater challenges, far more expensive challenges, that if you take care of it now, even on your own nickel, and have to get reimbursed later on. I'm looking at some of these states. So Florida, you think you're near the coast, right? The insurance premiums are going to be higher, Louisiana. But you've got Oklahoma, Texas, Mississippi, Colorado, Nebraska. The list goes on. What's driving up the cost for some of these states where home insurance is, is getting more and more expensive? Well, what's driven up home insurance uh, over the past few years is that reinsurance rates, which are what underpin uh, homeowners insurance have surged. That surged because we've seen a few years of a record amount of all kinds of disasters, not just flood, but but fires and, and mudslides and tornadoes and other events. Then you also had inflation. And if you think about it, when inflation surges, the cost of rebuilding a home surges. So that also is going to drive up uh, the cost of homeowners insurance. So what's confusing here, Marty, is that we have two compounding problems. We have flood insurance that's getting more expensive and that most people don't have. And then you have homeowners insurance, which will cover wind and other types of disasters. And that surged in past years. Um, you know, I think the real answer is as a country, we probably now have to recognize that given what's happening with weather volatility and intensity, we need to develop what I call NATCAT, an all hazards uh, national catastrophe policy so that everything, uh, flood, fire, tornado, earthquake, even frankly volcanic eruptions would be covered by a program that everybody with a federally backed mortgage would pay into. And that would give the country a corpus of, say if everybody with a mortgage put in a couple hundred bucks a year, 20 to $25 billion a year that we could push to whatever place uh, gets whatever type of event. Because when individuals don't get funding immediately after a disaster, the negative consequences start cascading. And that's not just bad for individuals, it's bad for communities. So 
I just think we're at a point now where we have to say, look, Asheville wasn't supposed to flood, but it did. Every place can have a disaster. We have to rethink our entire policy approach, um, you know, as, as a nation. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.